come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination you can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button or give us a review because all of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you who are into the same kind of schlocky dreck that we are some of us more than others and some of you maybe even more so than us uh (laughs) probably (laughs) based off of maybe not this year but other years well, who are these people who are talking to you? These are the internet radio superstars. Holly, Michaela, John, and I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by you for one final time. That's right. <laughs> this is uh, we're drawing to a close the end of Lister Request Month uh, that we ran. We put a poll up. You guys submitted suggestions. We voted on, or you voted on them, and we watched. Uh, what was our uh, lead off? Um, Big Trouble in Little China. And then we watched The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai across the eighth dimension and The Hidden. And tonight we're wrapping that up with a movie from the year 1987 called. A workout. Or a robicide. I like that you both said a different one at the same time. <laughs> there seems to be some confusion because the on screen title of tonight's movie is a robicide, but as is the title song. That's right? true. There is it. Can you sing it for us? Oh, I had it pulled no. up. <laughs> I'm like, I don't remember what the words were. We didn't get enough of it to make it memorable. It was a robicide workout until you die. I know that. Yeah, too low, Sean. We can't hear it. Unfortunately, uh, Sean's trying to. to I'll play just enjoy some... it myself. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, who directed this your... movie? Uh, I'm going to leave that one to Holly. Holly, because this seems um, you you claim this director. He's yours now. So this is kind of your. Is, is he mine? I don't. I don't know that I. I can say that. Oh, I mean. Boy. Oh boy. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll say. <laughs> So this is David A. Pryor is the director of this uh, immortal classic. David A. Pryor, of course, we would know from only a f- couple weeks ago when we watched a movie that was chosen by Holly called Night Stalker. No, no Night Claws. <laughs> Night Claws. Sorry, Night Claws. Night Claws. <laughs> we, we've we've all been we've all been watching the Night Stalker Netflix documentary, <laughs> so we're all a little off tonight. <laughs> Yeah. I really liked the Night Stalker, by the way. <laughs> you, you really did. I did. Sorry. Night, night, night we, we all we all pan Night Claws. Uh yeah. but David A. Pryor, if you want like his entire like history of who he is and what goes on and the types of movies he made, just jump back and listen to our Night Claws episode. Um mm-hmm. we only need one more movie to put him on the wall now, guys. Jesus, who'd have thought? Well, from all I mean, intents and purposes, that movie would be Deadly Prey. Apparently, that's the movie that people would maybe know him from, uh, from the VHS era. That was some kind of like commando type, not ripoff, but, you know, like a Soldier of Fortune movie. Uh, yeah. David A. Pryor always cast his uh, brother Ted in all of his movies. Ted is in this movie. He was in Night Claws. Um, and so he was, um, but I mean, I got to tell you, I mean, like we were saying before, like I watched a lot of, uh, eighties, uh, like bottom of the barrel eighties, um, uh, action horror movies. And I never encountered this guy <laughs> until now. Did, like, did you even like hear of it before it got brought up by Dom? I'm guessing. Hi Dom. Thanks Dom. Um, <laughs> Uh, had you heard of it before we started doing this show? Like, had you just decided not to watch it or had you not heard of it at all? I hadn't heard of killer workout. Um, but I did hear of a movie. I do remember the, the poster art or the, the VHS box cover for a movie called death spa. Mm. Got great cover art. Got the lady like on the stairmaster with the skeleton face. There's like a guy nice and like, Ooh. uh, he's like trapped in like workout gear in the back. I think it says, like, you'll sweat blood or something like that, right? I'm looking this up. Death Spa. Death Spa. I've seen Death Spa, and I get it confused with this movie all the time, even though I'd never seen this before. There was actually a moment in this movie. 
What's that? Wow. Yeah, you'll sweat blood. There's an unrated Blu-ray out there. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, everything that's old is new again. I believe even Killer yep. Workout is on Blu-ray, even though the fact that we watched it on Amazon Prime in a copy that was sourced off of a VHS because they had tracking issues the whole way through it. It was like, oh, my, oh my God. God. Okay. <laughs> Major gonna... tracking issues to where you couldn't even see what was happening sometimes. Yeah, Maybe, okay. I might be alone in this, but I kind of loved that. It really well, like it, it works for the movie. Yeah, I'm like, if we were gonna watch any movie to have a tracking issue, like this is the one that it worked for me. <laughs> it yeah, just kind of took the... me back. I was like, I really feel like we're like in Callum's basement watching his <laughs> old VHS right now. <laughs> but I kind of wish it would have been an HD so you could see all the seams and see how shitty everything actually looked, you know? Yeah. You know, the effects probably look terrible, you know? True, but it, I feel like it was kind of cool to get the experience of how we like would have actually watched it had we seen it before. Yeah, we got the authentic 80s. Uh, it's a movie from the 80s. We got the authentic 80, 80s experience. The digitized tracking where it gets even worse. You can't see anything <laughs> through rainbow ribbons on your screen. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it was bad. It was like, I mean, it really went like, yeah. whoa, I can't see a damn thing. Um, yeah, green lines and everything. It was, uh, it was wonderful. I was, uh, are you okay, Holly? Holly cat and her high and her feet. high ponytail <laughs> is being attacked. I'm sorry, my cat is attacking my feet, and he hasn't done that since he was a kitten, and he's like ten. I don't know where this is coming from. <laughs> Ow, he's, he's, I'm sorry. I'm he's, sorry. He's hyped up from the workout. He yeah. really is. I don't know like what it, is happening it, right now. I'm it, sorry. Is he wearing leg warmers and a thong right now? Just Always. Curious. That's his. That's his yeah. regular attire. Yeah, John. It's yeah. not just a thong. There's also like two layers of like spandex tights oh, yeah. underneath that thong. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. You work out leggings. You got to have those. And mm. the uh, what are the leg warmers? Got to have those. Um, this is I love uh, when they're on their way to the gym, and it's all the workout attire plus high heels, like six inch high heels. <laughs> God, I miss the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> this is the era. Nobody dresses like that anymore. I know. Big hair, uh, midriff, Big hair. Uh, skinny the, jeans, and high like, heels. The thing, is, the thing is, though, like actual people didn't dress like that in the 80s. Only Hollywood women dressed like that in the 80s. If you were to just walk around Rockford in 1983, you're not going to see that same attire. You're not going to see the six inch heels going to the mall. Like, no, people no didn't but really going out like to the that. clubs, uh, I, I think oh, you were, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because the trend okay. starts somewhere, and then it, it moved. We just got it like five years later or whatever. So. I want to see Colin the clubs. Yeah. I'm saying normal people, the majority of the country, the world, was not dressing like that. That's Hollywood movies. That's Hollywood women, not actual I, women. I don't believe you. I know. Holly's it's just. True. Porn. How can this many movies be wrong, Holly? I don't know. <laughs> we all know that movies are different than real life. We you got to check out a movie called <laughs> Heavy Metal Parking Lot. Where well, that was more like the rock rock kids, but you got all the the rock kids in Heavy the Metal hand. Parking Lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no. They were at like a Judas Priest concert in the eighties or something. <laughs> it was all filmed, and they made a movie uh, that came out I think in the oh. late nineties or something. Heavy Metal okay. Parking Lot. That sounds better. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So, well, I got it. Okay. So I was like, you know, well, we got to do some kind of research on this movie and there's not like a whole lot to it, but there is a phenomena, right. That, uh, I think this movie comes from, and that's the, uh, the workout, uh, video or the, the aerobics phenomena of the 1980s. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Jane Fonda workout, the, like man. health club obsession too. Like health clubs yeah. were at their peak at this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But like, when did the, all the, um, what's the, the, well, like not Goldie's gym, that's more like boxing and stuff with the, uh, express fitness or whatever, all those fitness places like spring up as later. Bally's. Yeah. 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 Oh, <laughs> that's one that I distinctly remember only existing in the eighties and nineties. I think as soon as Y2K <laughs> happened, every Bally's like ceased to exist. Bally total fitness. <laughs> so there was a craze um a craze oh, and I don't the know. ymca i feel like the ymca was was huge yeah for like aerobics workout oh yeah i mean i remember we had to do them in school and all that it was a thing and they'd play the same kind of synth pop music that they play in this movie um but there was a <laughs> series of videos that i remember that were advertised on tv that were called aerobicize 
right? And this movie's called Aerobicide. So I'm like, okay, you're not in your head. So you're like, I kind of remember Aerobicide. Yeah. Okay. So what I remember is Aerobicide is basically these half hour, like, you know, shows that were somewhere you could buy the tapes. And basically the image that I have of them is you guys are most familiar with like Friday, the 13th part four, right? The final chapter. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> the exact thing I was just thinking. Yeah. Cause I think like the beginning of where, what Axel, the uh, whatever lab technician is watching is like one of these aerobics videos. So I was like, mm -hmm. okay, so this was a craze. Like what the fuck, where did this start? And when I found out Sean, which oh. was hitherto unknown is that aerobicize, right? The much publicized video. I think there's like 55 of them, right? That were released by Paramount were originally created by an erotic photographer by the name of Ron Hess, who uh, made these for Showtime. <laughs> and uh, that's oh. where they actually got started. And then uh, I think he made, he eventually made the 20 minute workout. That was like the evolution. <laughs> I think he also did so the totally nude workout, but that's another thing. So well, the, that's what I was gonna say. So, so he started out. He, you said he started out making for Showtime. So his interest was not uh, uh, workout based. Bingo. Gotcha. <laughs> I labored he, under he, an illusion liked, my whole uh, like childhood that this was like this is a workout tapes for women. No, no, <laughs> no, no. Not when they were not how they were created. So he kind of fell ass backwards into the uh, into the actual like. Uh, training part of it it wasn't it, originally it was just for show gotcha. yeah yeah so there you go so Makes that sense. led Makes to this sense. whole like workout craze and eventually we got movies like killer workout death spa and i think there's maybe another one uh that came up when i was doing some searches so like the serial killer in a, a health club is death spa is that also a serial killer in a health health spa yes it is okay <laughs> it's uh it's just as colorful and as 80s nostalgic as this one. All right. Well, well I'm curious, Michaela, because I haven't seen it. So at the end, you're going to have to tell us which one was better. Because <laughs> I watched the trailer for Death Spot. And I'm like, I think we got the wrong movie. But maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I, I, I'm curious enough where I think I might give it a spin after all is said and done. Yeah. If we can find that one. That one in like. We got to uh, compare, yeah. Okay. So this movie starts out um, with a cold open. Um, that takes place in a tanning salon. Oh, no, no. Okay, well, we got to set it up because this is a character uh, moment that's important later for reasons that we don't initially understand. What happens here? Well, we have, <laughs> we have a, a scene that we are firm believers influence some other movies that we've seen and talked about. A woman gets trapped in a tanning bed where she is Essentially, to us, it looks like she's burned alive, that she's, it, it looks like she perishes. But yeah, the, the to, whole thing catches to us, fire. To anyone, yeah. to everyone on set, probably. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this lady died in this. Yes. As the burned whole tanning alive bed like, bed. explodes, basically, in flames. It does. It yes. Explodes, electrifies, flames. It's wonderful. <laughs> Well, they have a lot of scenes with this woman, but she has a big head of hair, but we never see her face. We actually meet her at her house at the beginning of the, her apartment when she gets a call on her answering machine, which tells her that she has gotten a gig um, being a model for Cosmopolitan. So she's supposed to get on a plane tomorrow, but they don't like tan yeah. lines. So she heads to the tanning salon where the mishap happens, where I was like, did I miss something? Did somebody kill her? Right? Did somebody come in and right. Jimmy the, you know, whatever the controls? It felt like it. I was waiting for a hand to come down and turn the controls up or something like that. But no, this apparently was a freak accident. No, Sean, that's what happens in <laughs> thirty some <laughs> years later, and I still know what you did last. Yeah. In, in every in every other subsequent tanning scene in horror movies, yes. <laughs> Yeah, because tanning tanning beds made a huge comeback, right? In the well, in the, the one 90s. in Final Destination Three is just a weird mouse trap of things going wrong. Yeah, the yeah. Person involved with that. The other one is just to do with a hook for a hand. So, you know. Yeah. So this woman dies and we're like, you know, but again, you never see her face. The, the movie takes pains to not show her face, even though we get. We do find uh, out that her name is Valerie. I think it's the only piece of information we get about her because the guy says it on the answering machine. Okay. All right. So then we cut to 
Rhonda's workout, right? Mm. This is uh, apparently the hottest place to go on this uh, strip mall or wherever where all the beautiful <laughs> young women of 1987 go to gyrate to synth pop music ad nauseum. And is this the theme of the 80s is as long as you're moving, it's it's considered exercise. Is this what they're doing? For real. I'm sorry. You're not going to get like a six pack or like major biceps from doing any of this. You're not like that's you might burn some calories. That's the best you can hope for. Yeah, it seems like you burn a few, but there's not totally much going on. Health wise, I would say. But there is for the camera. It's just cardio. It's just cardio, guys. Yeah, it just well, it's a robotize, right? You're just burning. Yeah. You're burning calories. Um, but the camera shoots all this with uh, lots of close-ups of uh, bosoms and buttocks. Yeah, so the camera has a has a leering eye. We shall say. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, amazing. <laughs> Which kind of, I guess, goes back to uh, you know where these things started. They're like right, they know their origin. audience. Um, I mean, it's this just, movie really does feel like a porn with all the actual like penetration edited out of it. It's yes, everything it else. It's all the lead up to it. It still kind of does. It does feel yeah. like those scenes. You're saying in production value and acting, every yeah. aspect, everything, the, the the setups, everything. Yeah. Well, we're introduced to a colorful cast of characters of people who fade from the movie without very much like uh, you know to do. Um, the most prominent among them, I suppose, is uh, Rhonda, who leads the workout. Um, we we know that uh, there's a buff dude there named Jimmy who's got his eyes on Rhonda, but she doesn't seem to like you know his attention. Um, and Jimmy's a uh, uh, Jimmy's a little creepy. He's he's always doing that one handed like, hey Rhonda, or like hey hey Jenny. Like he's always it's he's uncomfortable. He's very uncomfortable. And who was the first person to go? Because this is basically Killer Workout is a slasher movie for all intents and purposes, um, without like a lot of the slashings. But there was a, okay. This is a poker movie. Okay, many All people right. are poked. All right, what is the killer's weapon of choice? A safety uh, pin, a uh, giant a safety, safety pin. pin, a a skull piercing giant safety pin. <laughs> yeah, apparently can cut people into pieces according to what people say later on. Yeah. Everybody's getting cut into ribbons, pieces, <laughs> man. What do you use a giant safety pin on? I want to know. A giant baby diaper. Well, she uses it for a key hook. Like it's yeah. like her <laughs> yeah, like it's a like carbine. It's like one of those cat uh cat face like protection devices mm -hmm. that women have to carry now. Yeah. No, she was using it more of like a carbiner. Like she was just using it as a key hook. Well, sure. Yeah. Yeah. But I was just like, what, when I saw this, I'm like, wow, that's a big ass safety pin. Like what the, you yeah. know, what, what is the use for this thing? I think Sean's got it. It's for a big ass diaper. It's <laughs> the only time I've ever seen them. Is that the, is that the safety pin they used on the baby? On the, the baby. baby. Uh, yes. Same one. <laughs> the baby. Okay. <laughs> Probably. So anyway, the safety pin gets put to use in the shower. Of course, I think that was our first victim. Am I wrong? I no, that so, was yeah. right. She was. She was just one of the um, one of the ladies in the class, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's the one who stayed late afterwards. Um, uh, you know, when you shouldn't, right? When all the lights go off, killer comes in, turns light. Out. Is it a suspenseful scene? No. Is any of this movie suspenseful? No. No, because it's a David A. Pryor movie. <laughs> a guy who I think when we watched Night Claws, we said like, wow, he's made like, you know, a fuck ton of movies. Like you should have at some point learned how to make a movie. Right. Um, I think right. there's some structural issues that this movie also shares with Night Claws. Um, a few. Yeah. Because we're under the assumption that basically in order to, to, to bend, to do something different with a narrative and make it interesting you have to understand why narrative structure works in the first place then you can right. manipulate it if you have no fucking idea and you're just like and then this happens so so david's going <laughs> narrative structure <Claw? laughs> right may what is this thing may you speak of? 
Man, yeah, oh, man, he rests. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think Stop. Brother let's, Ted let's is still alive. Proper right? send off, yes. Okay. Brother Ted, yes. Okay. Sean just did a oh, he's probably he's, he's probably Brother Ted at this point. <laughs> um, Brother Ted, who plays who's in this movie as Chuck Dawson. That's a good name. It, it's a really good name for him. Uh, this this uh, uh, any meathead in the gym, Chuck Dawson. That's uh, a good one. Okay, well, well, let's back up just a little bit here because there is like this murder, and so if you're grading this on like slasher movie slashings, right? Because this is your setting up. I mean, we had boobs within the first like two minutes of the movie, so you're like, okay, boob quotient has been already met early on. Um, I was kind of surprised that there wasn't the group girl shower scene. It was just they all had sure. separate s- showers where the girl was attacked. Um, then the 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 slashing happens with the big giant safety pin. So makeup effects level, what what are we competency? What are we talking here? Well, this college point, level not, student film. Yeah. Like at this point, there's not even a lot of like effects it, it, with the first kill. All we, all we get is some blood. We don't really get anything else. And the blood is like coming from between her fingers. So we don't even see an actual puncture. We just see the blood. So there's, there's not really much at this point. Yeah, yeah. This I is, think this is a a blood only movie. Like I don't think we get. Yeah, we do get that. some. We do get some prosthetics later on, like torn skin and that kind of stuff that you then spray and, the caro syrup into the and scarring and the the big twist at the end. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> right. That's what I was thinking. Yes. Sure. That's right. We're going to spoil the hell out of this movie if you stick with us. There's a big yeah. twist at the end that no one saw coming. Not even probably David Pryor as he was writing it <laughs> until the day probably he wrote not. it. Yeah. He showed up to direct. He's like, wait, what? Wow, I didn't see that. Coming. I like to think the actors had were just like, okay, this movie has to go somewhere. So they had like secret meetings and made up their own twist. And then when they were filming it, he, he was the only one whose mind was blown. He's like, what? It was, this it, is amazing. It was a twist for the director. That's the twist. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a genius. <laughs> so who uh, who is uh, Chuck Dawson then? Our next uh, well, Jimmy. Jimmy. Oh yeah, Jimmy is played by a guy named Fritz Matthews. What yeah. you guys are saying like doesn't sound like a real name. Who knows if it is? I don't know. Fritz doesn't Matthews. Sound real. It doesn't sound real. Right. It sounds like it's, a porn actor name. Or it's it sounds like. It sounds like a sportscaster in an 80s movie. Fritz Matthews. Fritz. Yeah. Fritz, Fritz Matthews. Yeah, I think he Fritz was also sports, in uh, Fritz Matthews. He was also in Deadly uh, well, Prey Chuck, and some Chuck of the Dawson other. Dawson feels more like the sportscaster. Uh Chuck Dawson. Sports. I was thinking Chuck Dawson sounds like a used car salesman. I mean that too. <laughs> These are all the same people. <laughs> like game show I'm host. Pretty sure Chuck Dawson. Right, exactly. Yeah. You could be a game show host or a car salesman like <laughs> That's all they do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so who is Chuck Dawson? Uh, he's he's like an FBI informant. He's like a law. He's a private. He's what well, we reserve. He's a private, a private dick, dick, Sean. Yes. <laughs> the, right, yeah. Uh, Michaela, you're right. This is very homoerotic through mm-hmm. most of this movie. These two dudes can't keep their hands off each other, man. Ooh. Every no, they time can't. they see each other, they got to have about? a little slap fight. Yeah, what, Jimmy and Jimmy Chuck? and Chuck. Jimmy and Chuck. Okay, okay. Yeah. So set up the dynamic here. What's going on with these? So, so Chuck Dawson is basically like he shows up. We don't know yet. This is a shocking reveal later that he's actually a private detective who's been hired by the management of Rhonda's workout to like you know after the first girl gets killed. They're like send that private detective over. So he's working in in disguise, right? And he so he he's shows basically up the pool boy. Yeah, because he's he signs up for a, he's been hired to work there, and she's like, "What? Why are you going through my office?" He's like, I'm, "You know, I'm working here." But yeah, he immediately has like this kind of the stare down thing with Jimmy. We don't know why at the time, but these two guys just don't get along. Yeah, they get. Uh, uh, I think Chuck almost gets run over by Jimmy in the parking lot as Jimmy pulls up in his Mustang, mm-hmm. uh, and then from there they get into the. Well, the gayest fight in cinema history. I, I, I might say. It's 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 got to be. It's up there. I mean, yeah, like when he turns him around and pushes him up against the wall, like face first, and he's like right behind him, and then he says, "Next time I'll finish you." Come yeah, on. yeah, it's really These guys gay. Are this this close to fucking each other, like it, through that that whole fight scene. It's pretty amazing. That was foreplay. That entire fight scene was foreplay. Mm. 
He just has to end it with, like, I used to fuck guys like you in prison. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so the, uh, the fight scene, the fight choreography is something to behold in itself in this movie. Um, uh, Holly had a pretty good description for it. Yes. There's, there's a very specific, uh, scenario that I would like to compare this to. And if you have siblings, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. When I was a kid, I have an older brother. He's two years older. When I was a kid, he and his best friend would be out in my backyard on our trampoline every fucking day, like pretend fighting, whether, I mean, most of it was like WWF related, right? Like they even brought out chairs and like, it was, that's what it was mostly. But some of it was like, you know, pretend martial arts they thought they could do that shit that's the fighting style we're talking about with this movie like my brother and his friend at 12 years old probably choreographed this movie it would not surprise me my damn my dumb ass brother used to do shit like that all the time right. too yeah uh, and they uh, think it looks yeah. so cool but it doesn't oh, they think they look so great yeah I have two older brothers, so I was on the receiving end of a few rock bottoms and stone cold stunners in my time. Right, right. Un- unwanted, but yes, out on the trampoline. There I will were say, wrestling moves galore. I will say, since I was a girl, my brother was not allowed to do any of the wrestling moves on me. However, I got him in a few moves a few times, and I got really good at the stunner. I just want to say that. <laughs> really good. It's the most fun one to do on a trampoline. It is. Like, it really is. So. I think. I I'm swear to God, we used to, well, we used to do it in uh, one of our bedrooms, too, just on the bed. And, you know, how kids do shit oh, yeah. until they break the light, which we broke the light. But then my, yeah. I'm pretty sure my brother gave me a stunner on a bed and shit my tooth. One of my teeth <laughs> shit from, <getting laughs> from wrestling moves. I never broke Somewhere a light, but I did put some holes in drywall. Yeah, uh, for sure. Oh, I actually, I learned how to patch drywall because I did <laughs> put holes. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're going to fucking fix this. We're not doing this anymore. <laughs> Yep. Well, uh, the, the so those two guys like they they don't get along, but there there's also uh, I think they don't get along if I'm if my memory is correct because there might be a little sexual tension between uh, Rhonda and uh, the Chuckster, maybe a little bit. And Jimmy's like, I don't like this, and so that's why he doesn't like him. I mean, there's not as much tension as between Chuck and Jimmy, but there's a little tension, yeah. Mm, yeah. And then um, there's a little sexual tension between uh, Chuck. And um, what was her name? Denise? Diane? Denise? Which which one? Uh, that no was idea. the one who, who makes eye contact as she's doing her gyrations on uh, her. Oh, is this, the one who really wants Jimmy. Is, is this the one that was mostly teaching the classes? No, no. The one who uh, offered uh, the Chuckster a ride <clears throat> back to her house. Remember? Because she had oh, the hot car. And she's like, with you want to go With the really big boobs, but yeah. they never show them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. She's she goes into the house. She's like, uh, now you just uh, like, what are you leaving for? I'm gonna go into the house and uh and change and you just stay right yeah, there. And, and and then she comes out in a robe and then she tries to seduce him by opening the robe and she's wearing a bathing suit underneath. Yeah. And they're like And well and while you're gone, he's gonna make a call on a phone that's definitely not plugged in. Right. And just I mean, sitting on a table in the backyard. Yeah. Well, I looked yeah, her up because uh, she was a striking woman. Well, only because she's in um, the, like, when we were Googling this or whatever, people were sending us when they were voting for this movie, would send us these gifts. And she's in all the gifts uh, for Killer Workout. Her real name is uh, Diane Copeland. And it turns out that, uh, like, she's only done, like, three movies. I think, like, Surf Nazis Must Die and this one and something else. But she got married to Mixmaster Mike of the Beastie Boys and formed, like, a production oh. company called, uh, like, Copeland something. And she manages him and a bunch of other artists. So that's, like, what she's doing. Oh, cool. Now. Good for her. Yeah. And I think nice. they're still married. They're still. Damn, from, girl. From like, humble, be- humble beginnings. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Good for him, I should say. <laughs> Bravo. Yeah. Well, what happens to her? What? Because, I mean, we're talking about a movie with a body count. Uh, let's <laughs> run through some of the kills. That's... Like, what What happens to her? Uh, wait, okay. So this is the one. She tries to seduce old Chuckster. The Chuckster's not having it. He's saving himself for maybe Rhonda. I don't know her. But we later find out he's for on a mission. Jimmy. Oh, he's yeah. saving himself for, for Jimmy. Jimmy. Okay, there you yeah. go. And you're yeah. in your in your they version will. of this movie. Okay. Uh they are meant to be together. <laughs> well, I don't remember why, but I believe that old Denise is part of the three person crew that comes to the 
uh, the the gym at night start spray painting death spa on the place because there have been several murders at this point, um, none of which like I can actually remember is people getting stabbed. Oh, with, was, she, uh, was she the one with the really big hair? I think she was the one in the car, right? Um, she was the one who makes it oh, to the car because she's not in the movie yeah. after that. So I was like, that was her, right? But I don't know. You can't really tell. Um, yeah, the killer right. somehow dispatches the first two people. Uh, and then tracks her down to the car and then starts stabbing through the roof with a big ass knife and then ends up like pegging her in the head. But I don't know how that actually happened because the movie doesn't actually show it in a way that's clear. Like he, we well, get the killer duck when someone's trying to stab your car, you can get stabbed in the head. If you just put your head there where the knife yeah. is, you'll die. Yeah, if you just kind of like lay down, but instead she was like trying to like dodge. Yeah, as the like, blades come Just lay through. down, Holmes. Crawl off the other side. Yeah. Recline your seat back at the very least. Yeah. If nothing something. else. Yeah. So the murders keep continuing. The movie basically becomes a series of... Question. Question. Why did they spray paint the window? They're like 30. What, what, why are they spray painting and vandalizing this place? And why did they spray paint it with the name of the competing movie, Death Spot? <laughs> well, that hadn't come out yet. Yeah. So uh, yeah, but they, they literally just... had the the words side by side, aerobicide next to death spa, literally <laughs> side by side on the window. Like, what is happening right they now? Saw just inspiring people. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's also they're calling it death spa because the cops have finally getting gotten involved. Uh, like, there's a detective. I can't remember his name. Is like Robert Mason or something. He doesn't deserve to have Robert Mason. Morgan, he doesn't deserve Morgan, Lieutenant name. Morgan. Morgan. Yeah, there it is. He shows up, <laughs> and he's you know all business, and he's going to find out who the killer is, and he's interrogating Rhonda. Rhonda doesn't like well, it, you know. Colin, he's only business in the front, in the back. He's a little bit of party. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you guys are talking about. That dude was acting his heart out, especially toward uh, the end, as the yeah. I mean, he really was. Did you? When he's, did you guys notice how many times he changed direction to look up in the air while telling? Oh the yeah. Story? Oh yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. he's good. He knows what he's doing. He's like, I'm going to do does. this one facing that way. And I'm going to stand over there and and say this one coming the other way. That's why I've like changed the shot just by moving. Yeah. Yeah. Dynamic. I mean, he's dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's I like, mean, you say he knows what he's doing, but I don't know that. He knows what he's doing. You know? no, I mean, no, well, well nobody I else knows, what he's, doing, he knows, he what, knows he's what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. Yes. Yeah, he thinks he knows what he's doing. There you yes. go. Yeah. He's, he's he's somewhat aware of what his body is doing, I think. Yeah. That's the, that's kind of the general theme of this movie, Sean, is people aware of their bodies. You right? And I became very aware of their bodies. And we became very all. aware of Colin being aware of their bodies. <laughs> we did. <laughs> Um, did indeed well because of the movie it's basically i mean for those of you listening i mean it, the structure of the movie is basically a workout montage set to a catchy synth pop then like a stalking scene maybe a scene where somebody talks to the cops or something then a workout montage then a stalking scene then a workout montage stalking yep. scene yeah it just repeated so there's at least five workout montages in this right. movie um yes. Yeah, it very much reminds Do you remember uh, in Rocky IV how every other scene is a montage? It's kind of like that, but not as great. <laughs> there's, no beach, there's no beach running. No, there's no... Uh, is, that the, is that the one with the, the Russian? Yeah. yeah. Drago? Four. Yeah. So, yeah, so there's, there's beach running. There's, uh, uh, you know, horses and there's the running snow. up mountains in the winter. There's oh, like a lot of a lot of snow workouts, yeah. A lot yeah. of bearded Stallone. God, yeah. I'm going to watch that movie tomorrow. <laughs> this one just has a lot of uh, crotch shots and boob shots and butt shots and all sorts it's of stuff thousand. that you're like, wow, it's a good thing they're closed because these are like revealing positions that they're putting all these women in or where they're putting the cameras. Um, so the the killer keeps striking at this place. They're always like bagging up bodies and taking them out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they are. It is. It's. It's uh, a <laughs> death scene and then white body bag with the great soundtrack over it, I like, which is great. I like that every scene is like zipping up a white body bag while there's a workout happening because the workouts never stop. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Never the, stop. The cops are perplexed. They can't figure out why there's so many bodies coming out of this place. Rhonda gets upset, ch chastising the cops. It's like half my customers are dying. Half of them are canceling their memberships. I mean, 
It's Why is it still full? It doesn't seem like it. Like, right. the place didn't miss a beat. They didn't even close murders, for a day. Yeah, and murders are happening as the classes are going on. Like, the cop walked out of the room, someone got murdered in that room, and then he came right back. Yeah. I'm pretty sure your suspects... Yeah. No, it's like narrowed down. Like I, I don't even know which to criticize first: the fact that the cops didn't shut it down, or that everyone showed up to class and stayed for the class, even though there was a murder in the next room. Yeah, because I mean, where I else know. are you gonna go, know. really? I mean, you gotta burn your calories, otherwise you're gonna lose that perfectly toned, sculpted uh, '80s bod. Uh, yeah. There's a scene uh, that's kind of shocking because it comes out of nowhere where um, one of the, uh, I think it was one of the blonde aerobics instructors, maybe the one that was late at the beginning of the movie. If I have my characters right, I don't even know. Yeah, I think so. She was the one that she was teaching most of the time when we would see the classes. Yeah. And she seduces this one guy and brings him back to the locker room for obligatory locker room sex. Uh, And while she's having sex with this guy, or at least she's uh, straddling this guy, Jimmy comes in behind her. She looks at the guy that she's straddling and she's like, I just wanted to say goodbye, Tom. And Jimmy with a knife cuts her throat. And then, uh, isn't it both Jimmy? Wait, no. Isn't it both the same guy? No, because the guy cuts her throat. No, because they look so much alike. I know. They look exactly the same. Yeah, because I was like, who, 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 who's, which one is who? Anyway, the guy who was like laying down on the bench, right? Is then, knocked out because apparently he comes to and the cop morgan is talking to him and like well that guy really worked you over and blah 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 and as soon as the cop leaves this is i think the scene you're talking about sean like the cop leaves the room and the killer comes in and kills that guy and you're like what the yeah because we were like did 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 something just happen (laughs) yeah right (laughs) it's It's literally like they could have entered and left the room at the same time and then he gets stabbed in the head. This is the skull piercing safety pin um, brought in again. Uh, hell of a safety pin. Yeah. But yeah, he is murdered within seconds. But now we know that Jimmy is the killer, right? Like we saw him kill somebody. No, I, I swear to God, let's go back and watch it again. It's, the, it's him. It's himself. I swear it's the same guy. The guy that's being straddled is the guy that cuts her throat. And then he's I'm also the guy sure. that gets killed. Yes, I'm pretty sure that guy's playing two roles in that scene. See, I but that scene didn't character. happen. But in the dream is what I'm saying. I was say, that's a dream scene. That didn't happen. I know. I'm saying in the dream scene, the guy is playing both roles. He's strangling right. himself against the locker. It's the same guy. So okay. he's okay. totally himself <laughs> kill the woman. I'm I'm 85 percent sure it's the so same. So this guy. is a psychological thriller, is what you're saying. For 30 seconds, it is, yes. What did he, was that followed by a scene of Jimmy waking up, you know, in sweat, going and like, uh, uh, what? Yes. It was? And then the, then he talked, no, no, well, no, it's not Jimmy, it's the other guy. <laughs> what other guy? <laughs> There's another, bl- bl- isn't there another dark haired guy? The guy, darker guy who gets killed. I don't know. They all look the same. They all look the same. Let's move all on. All the women look the same. All the men look the same. They all look the same. Okay, well, I'm pursuing my train of thought here, then, that because okay. Jimmy becomes like the guy that um, Chuck Dawson has identified as the killer because Chuck Dawson gets outed as a private detective, like shortly after this, right? Right. Where the detective Morgan is like, "I know your game, Dawson. Tell me about that thing that happened eight years ago, wasn't it? Where you were on that case and blah blah blah. And what are you doing here?" And you got to get out. And Rhonda's like all freaked out because, you know, he's been identified as a private detective, not an actual, uh, you know, uh, what an employee. And Chuck is like, this is this guy, Jimmy. He just looked at her weird. I knew it was him. It was not normal. Right. So I've been following him around or whatever. That's oh, why yeah. this I was is, inter- He explains this after the second showdown with Jimmy. Is that the one where Jimmy tried to run him over in the parking lot? No, it's the one at the pool where he's. All right. The big fight, <laughs> the big, the big oh, fight yeah. where he's the, J- yeah. uh, Chuck is keeping an eye on on Rhonda, spying on her in the bushes, um, and then Jimmy shows up because he's he's uh, obsessed with Rhonda and he's um, uh, jealous, and he comes up, and then there's a big fight between uh, Jimmy and Chuck. Wait, is this is this before or after the other fight in the gym when? 
they cut there's the two dead bodies and he's standing over the dead bodies and they come in and see him like that and then they like start fighting he's he's like holding his head and he's like <laughs> remember that, Is that before or after? Oh, that's that's the guy right there that chuck beats up that's the guy who gets poked in the head after the dream yeah right that was hilarious because that was with, hilarious with no, with no delay Chuck is jumping, jumping stairs and just <laughs> he grabs the guy and punches him in the face like three times. I, 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 don't know, I, I don't know how to describe it to convey how humorous it is. Just the choreography again of this fight. It's it amazing. looks, the, it literally Multiple looks like punches the, to the abdomen. It looks like the film was sped up. Like it doesn't even look like it's real time. It, it's so fast. It's this fun. seriously looks like, like your older brother making a movie in your backyard. Like, yeah, it looks like it does. It does. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember that fight. To be honest with you, that one like I it was no. so quick, Colin. It no. was so quick. I know. It's I so remember fast. that at, at the pool uh, because there's like a lot of uh, there's a lot of kicking going on. You know where you like grab the guy's arm, get it behind his back, and then you deliver a bunch of kicks to like his yeah. either chest or face. And then there's yeah. the roundhouse. Well, it's supposed to be a roundhouse that knocks him into the pool at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Chuck going into the pool because we can't apprehend Jimmy right now. He's got to be left alone to, you know, still make, continue his reign of terror as yeah. uh, he apparently takes down some more customers, like as they're out walking home and all that other stuff. He stalks another girl in her house, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, so somewhere around here, right, there is like this startling revelation that comes out of nowhere. Right, we do end up. Uh, we wait. go back to Rhonda, don't we? Wait, wait, wait. Yes, but I can't remember now. Did that happen after the parking lot incident? That is also a startling incident. <laughs> I think it's. I think we find out about Rhonda before that. Dun dun dun. She burned. What? <gasps> what? What startling parking lot incident are you talking about? Chuck Dawson, here our hero. Dawson, Chuck Dawson. Gets fucking stabbed to death by Jimmy in the parking oh, lot. Oh, yeah. Jimmy right. finally penetrates Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and to quote uh, the great Charles Bronson in 10 to Midnight, the knife is his penis. Yeah. The knife is his penis. Or in this case, <laughs> the safety you know, this is pin. For, is this for jerking off? <laughs> <laughs> you got to see that movie. Add this to our episode, 10 to Midnight. <laughs> one of the greatest, yeah. most enduring <laughs> Saturday Night Freak Show movies. Um, My son is probably wondering what what I'm shouting. At here. <laughs> like, it's an iconic okay. movie. It really is iconic. It's, it's, it's got a it's got a, a motorized uh, drill dildo. It's pretty fun. <laughs> the nudest of serial killers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, we need to watch that again. And Charles Indeed. Bronson. So I mean, you know, it's a perfect <laughs> storm. Um, yeah, so so Chuck gets taken out. We don't actually see this because the filmmakers again don't believe in actually showing you uh, important Anything. pieces of the movie that you might need to process. <laughs> right. um, so I did like you know that that Chuck drops down into that stance as the car's racing at him because now he now does. that he he everybody knows he's a private detective he can use his, his gun and you know drops right. into cop stance and then he gets bounced off the head you know the hood of the car which is always like a great thing to for independent filmmakers like look we did a stunt <laughs> <You know? Right. laughs> all right everyone this is our big stunt let's not fuck it up today it's the only one we got yeah <laughs> But he's all of a sudden dead, and you're like, "What?" Yeah, Chuck's I was dead. Kind of surprised that they would just kill Chuck. I really I was wasn't disappointed. <laughs> disappointed. I wasn't surprised. No, because we saw Night Claws, and we know that David yeah. likes to kill Chuck before the end of the movie. Apparently, yeah. God knows what happens <laughs> in Deadly Prey. Now, you know, if we watch that, probably the same thing. <laughs> um, does Chuck ever make it to the end of his brother's movies? There you go. Um, <laughs> so yeah, then it's revealed. Right, the next startling reveal is the thing about Rhonda. Right. Well, we see this character from behind that's all scarred, you know, going into a locker room and putting on hair. I can't remember if right then it's shown that it's Rhonda, but we're like, what? Yeah, what just happened? A, she does a dramatic turn to the to the camera. Just <laughs> yeah, with hair <laughs> on and then. Oh. Yeah, no, and, we already know. We already know that it's her, though, right? Because she already told the, the cop what i don't really what are you talking in the locker room scene like she's already revealed that it's no, her no, at no. that point no we see the scarred head first like the darth vader of it all 
And then the cop confronts her and she pulls open and shows all the rest of her scars. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because there was that scene and I was like, wait, what the hell's going on? Like, they just dropped this into the movie and now we have a scarred lunatic running around. And, okay, yeah. you know, because it's like, is this the killer? You're like, we thought it was a guy, but it's actually her, you know? And like, so she's putting on maybe like in popcorn, different people's faces or, you know, something. Uh, cause right. clearly the killer is male in the, in the early scenes of the movie. It's like, okay, well that's a guy right there, but this could be, you know, maybe she's doing it. Um, cause there was, there was a scene at one point when we see like the, like the killer hand, like all of his weapons. And we see like the edge of like a wig being set on a table. So we know at one point the killer's wearing a wig. We just don't know why, if he's or if they're in disguise as a woman or if they're just in disguise in general, like we don't, we just see the edge of a wig. So we know there's, there's disguises happening. Yeah. But that's the only part that they really reference that until this part. Yeah. And then because we're sitting there going like, what the hell's going on? All of a sudden detective Morgan shows up and he's like, hello, Valerie, you know? And uh, I love this, (laughs) this whole monologue. It is so ridiculous <laughs> how much of that how much of it do you remember you got to give me because some of this was gold. oh god i i oh, i one of my favorite parts is like there was two parts to this the first part is that beautiful people were dying but i couldn't figure out what the second common factor was until <laughs> i remember there was a valerie johnson <laughs> not Rhonda. there's a valerie who got horribly burned it's like you can't stand having beautiful people. Be- what was it like? Beautiful, beautiful bodies. Yeah, he's talking about bodies. Young yeah, people with young beautiful people bodies body, all around. He's like the beautiful bodies. You couldn't take it. <laughs> you can't stand it. This monologue goes on for so long. I was like, so dude, long. get to the point, man. <laughs> yeah, but oh, he yeah. keeps talking about bodies. I the think bodies. he's got. It's like- he's got the problem here. <laughs> But it's been like we've watched this whole movie where there's been like hardly any plot and they're just dumping plot in like a five minute monologue. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't figure out the motive until I thought back about this case that happened before. Um, Yeah. (laughs) And then she's like, is this what you want? And so she pulls open her robe and exposes her the fact that her whole body is like totally scarred. Um, And then so we're like, okay, so is is she the killer? He seems to think that she is. He takes her at gunpoint and he's like, come on, we're going. Or he puts the bracelets on her mm. as, as cops do. Bracelets on. Slaps, slaps the bracelets on. That's right. Mm-hmm. Because the idea here is that she's actually been killing everybody. Right. Cause she's jealous of their beautiful bodies. Right. And, and, uh, uh, Jimmy. Well, we've seen him kill people though. That's or it's right. like, but we've seen him actually kill people. And then, Right? Because he's jealous, Colin. Yeah, but because it turns out that he's protective of her because he's in love with her. That's what's going on here. Right. It's tragic, right? Like, he's in love with her and wants to protect her, and he knows who she is and that she's scarred, but he still loves her anyway. And, you know. I'm convinced this is where they got the idea for the show You. Anyone? Anyone watch it? Anyone? Oh, yeah. I didn't even think of that, but I don't, now that I can totally see that. Right? <laughs> That's right. They're all fans of Killer Workout, let me tell you. <laughs> I think a lot of people are, yeah. But then as, as the cop is about to take her away in the car, right. They get a call on the radio, um, that, uh, right. Chuck Dawson's dead. And of course all the witnesses saw, it's like, it was Jimmy, <laughs> you know, we saw him. It was right. Jimmy. So he's like, fuck, I can't actually arrest her then because like they got the guy dead to rights. And then, uh, Jimmy, but like during, during their little like back and forth, didn't she kind of like, incriminate herself with her responses i can't remember because now in my memory it was like what i'm all burned and like this is you know like i couldn't have you know no and yeah, all that she, because i recall like i don't remember exactly what she said but she didn't really deny that he was wrong she didn't really yeah. say no that's i didn't do it or anything like that she kind of went along with it like i don't think she denied it but she didn't quite like admit it where he's got her hmm, maybe because she was able to be like, hey, you heard it. He's the killer. Let me go. Yeah. Yeah. So he has to really let her sketch. go. I don't know. And then yeah. as they go to try and track down Jimmy, but Jimmy has circled back to the um, the workout 
Jim. And uh, one night while uh, Rhonda's taking a shower, he sneaks into the locker room and we're like, what's he going to do? Does he have the safety pin with him? Is he going to kill her or what? And then she uh, like, you know, has it goes into her locker. She's got like a 45 mag or 44 Magnum. Right. It's a very big gun. And she just blows him it, away. It the, yeah. It yeah. is the last action hero gun. And he's like, what was she? What'd she ask him? I know the answer was because I love you. You know, oh, she's like, why'd you kill Chuck Dawson? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because see, she had a thing for Chuck Dawson, right? Like, it was uh, not explicit in the script because written by David A. Pryor, but I think I that's know, what was I going on. I don't know that she had a thing for him. I think she was probably legitimately like, hey, why did you kill him? Like, what was the point of that? Yeah, what's going on? Yeah, I, I, yeah they all don't. They're, they're all still questioning Jimmy's motive at this point. They know he's nuts, but they don't know why. Yeah. yeah. And now he's dead. She killed him. And then and that's the end. But no, then we cut to uh, like a that's not it. no, no. Then <laughs> then we got a, a now all of a sudden there's a car driving over a hill coming towards us. And we hear voiceover from Rhonda talking to Morgan, the detective Morgan. And she's like, I was about to go to something. And then all of a sudden you pulled up and I had to get in the car with you and we're going somewhere. I mean, it was that kind of thing. And he takes her out to a right. cliff's edge somewhere in the like a hilly mountaintop or whatever hill. And then he hands yeah. her a shovel. Or no, he's got the shovel, right? He's got a shovel. And he goes over yeah. to like a he goes over to an area and plants the shovel in the ground. And, and this then, is where he shines. Yeah. Man. Tell me tell me about this scene, because this was this was actor master class, right? Yeah, here. this is a heartfelt monologue talking about the thin line between right and wrong and his father and when he had to cross that line between right and wrong and take matters into his own hands because he's a good man could have been, could have been, yeah no <laughs> this could have been better as if it slowly faded into a flashback of a war or something <laughs> it would have been great but i think he made up for it with like the turning of the head and looking up at the trees yeah like i i really felt that you know <laughs> it's 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 an amazing uh it's an amazing choice to act yeah. but never change your face yeah, that's an interesting choice, I'd say. He's a driven man. He's like, this is the moment where I'm going to do what my father did. Because he's telling about, uh, like, there was a series of killings or something his dad had to investigate when he was a cop. Yeah, he, right? he was a cop. He was a good man, but, like, when the he, time he came, had he had to. He was a serial killer. He had him. Yeah. But then they had to let him go, and the killings began again, and he had to take matters into his own hands. And he crossed that because, line. Because justice, that's why. Yeah, and today I'm going to cross that line. And uh, while he's too busy monologuing, she uh, picks up the shovel and cracks him on the back of the head, and he's out of the movie. She kills yes. him. Surprise. Which we also didn't see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which we also don't see. <laughs> and then we just go back to the uh, the the gym. Go back to the death spa. Oh, wrong movie. Not yeah. that movie. <laughs> That's never dealt with the fact that it has been graffiti. We don't even know why people were graffitiing the, the front right? place. Because I thought why it was maybe somebody got parties? fired or why something. Why are they vandalizing? It makes no sense. They're whatever. just like, it's because the police won't close this place down. It's a death spa. And yet they keep showing up to class. Because we have to. Right? Yeah, it's open. Saying, they paid that yeah. they paid that membership beforehand. Oh, yeah, so they're they're gonna they already go paid for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they already paid six for months, it. six months is already down on that, and they're only two months in. They gotta get the money's worth. That's right. And they're not giving them a refund. They're like, We're still open. You can come in. We're not giving <laughs> yeah. you your money back. Right. <laughs> Bitch. You just can't use that room because that's where the body is. <laughs> yeah. Well, she comes in, she's greeted with a hero's welcome by all she of really her, her students, right? Who all give yeah, her like I an liked applause. the uh, I liked the close up on her face during that applause. Right? She's yeah. like, it's so it's so interesting that shot. It's why would they do fantastic. that? Fantastic. I don't know, but it's fantastic. It's something you can't oh. look away from. Yeah. Cool things like that where you're just like, wow, oh, I could stare at that forever. It's so weird. It's one of those shots, it's a close up insert that doesn't match the long shot that you just cut from. That yep. kind of yeah. thing. And yep. then she goes into the back room and she's greeted by another woman. She's got a new new coworker. Right. And as the co-worker leaves, old Rhonda pulls out the old uh, giant safety pin and caresses it while looking at the camera. 
Yes, I was. There's a lot of cur- there's a lot of skull. caressing of inanimate objects in this movie, like jock straps. <laughs> oh yeah, right. <laughs> what was going so on? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, the moment that confirmed what we have all thought that women do jock strap raids in the locker room. Yeah. Yeah. Did that mean anything to this movie? No, I, I still don't understand. Like, whose locker was that, and why was she fondling the jock strap? I thought that was Jimmy's locker. Was uh, it? I thought so too. Yeah. Yeah. The Jimmy was gone, and so she was going in there and like fondling his jock strap, which is weird that he would kill her later. But you know, hey, <laughs> yeah, any woman, any woman that'll fondle your jock strap is a keeper. So I don't, yeah, I don't. That's see a very man kill. perspective because if I found out a dude was going in my locker and feeling up my underwear, I would definitely kill him. There you right. go. <laughs> I'd be like, if I don't kill him, he's going to kill me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. a good point. That yeah. is a good point. Like, well, this Why isn't good. He's got to go. I saw yeah. him following your jock strap. Well, I have to find a new gym. That's yes. <laughs> maybe a new city. That's uh, no. yeah. I can't even remember what happens there. I think maybe she was the one that Jimmy killed. And I'm not sure. There's so many people die. Some of them get hung. They're hanged. Oh yeah. She gets hung. That's right. Was yeah. That her? Yeah. yeah. She gets, she gets hung, but for some reason, like it's bloody. Uh, yeah. yeah, she broke her neck and a bone came out. Oh, okay. Patricia. Yeah, it okay. looks like her throat is slit though, and she's hung by it. Right. Probably. Oh, like, did they forget that she didn't actually get her throat cut that that was a dream sequence? Like, I don't, I don't I think that actually there. happened. You're saying it's a dream sequence. I think it actually happened. It didn't happened. happen. Okay. Yeah. She yeah. didn't get her throat cut. That Maybe didn't happen. Afterwards. All I know is I love how they shoot a person hanging when they're not hanging, when they're standing on their feet. And they're like, okay, move like you're rocking back and forth. Like <laughs> this is great. But yeah, just got to go down, got to go up. Yeah. Okay. What do we think of the original soundtrack score? Not the score, but the uh, pop song soundtrack to Killer Workout. I, thought I mean, I thought, song, I thought yeah. it was a highlight. Yeah. yeah. All the music was dope. Yeah, that was pretty good. Because it's a it. synth pop. Is that what we're calling it? What's that, that genre? It's like sure. 80s pop, like yeah. I don't know. 80s workout pop is what yeah. it's starting to call right now. It was very, I don't know. Up. It was it was like a it was like a poor man's Bonnie Tyler kind of shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's wall to wall. Well, I don't even did know we, if there if there was did, a score. Did we look up to see who who it was singing, like Yeah, I watched through through the credits. There were several different uh yeah. bands and stuff. So okay. uh, yeah. Um Good for them. They're on uh, the. They're immortalized <laughs> now on the soundtrack to Killer Workout, which I'm sure uh, right? Death Waltz Records or somebody or Waxwork Records has put out. And is that happened? I don't know. I'm sure they're thinking about it. Let's find out. Yeah. <laughs> well, while Sean looks that up, I guess this is as good enough as a time as any to summon our mailman to bring us the mail, and his name is Igor. Bring us that mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He's got his spandex on. Many, many layers of spandex. Lots of spandex. Uh, and a headband. Yeah. That's and the other thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. And a thong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well. We would like to remind you how you can get a hold of us and join in this interactive portion of our show. All you got to do is follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Um, so first of all, tonight, the Sleeping Dragon wrote in to say, I like your podcasts. Good job, guys. Oh, thanks. Hey, thanks. Thanks. Is that a Chinese restaurant or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they listen to us while they're making food and shit. The oh, sleeping no. dragon. That's great. Okay. About tonight's movie, which was Killer Workout Karate Warrior 2. That's, oh, boy. Uh, that's Dom Cree <laughs> right there. Said, thanks to anyone who did vote. We got it done. It's only taken since November 2014 for the Saturday Night Freak Show to revisit this classic, <laughs> but dreams eventually do come true. Killer workout. What can I say? It's not great. It's not bad. It's not so bad. It's good, but in a good throwback watch from the days of the video store, so much hot 
eighties hair. And I always fall in love with Debbie. Who's actually married to a beastie boy in real life. We like Debbie. I was going to ask if we knew how far back Dom had started recommending this. I'm glad he remembered. Yeah. Dom remembered enough. Lived up to his expectations. Well, oh God. He remembered enough to actually post a clip of, uh, so Gary, who used to be on the Saturday night freak show actually took one for the team at one point, watched this on his own and gave a, a brief synopsis on one of our episodes. And Dom remembers right. where that is. And he clipped wow. it and he posted it on our social it wasn't media. Our Star so. crash episode. Was it? I don't know. So congratulations, Dom. You had enough people to vote for you. Although I'm kind of curious now because uh, we only got two comments on this movie, which makes me wonder if somebody didn't game the system. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I feel like, I feel like we gained, somebody game the system to get this one in. I, I believe Dom is an honest person. So I'm going to take the opposite stance and say he didn't. I No, I, I, I believe Dom didn't do it, but I think someone did. Well, Maybe I feel it's, like some of our I feel like some of our regulars like team together and they're like let's do it for Dom and they voted for it. <laughs> well, I remember. Well, we had just talked about it on the Night Claws episode. And then it came up sure. for a vote, and yeah. I do know there were several people actually did post things about it. So you know who knows. Anyway, Michael Whitaker said, "You know what? For some reason, I keep thinking Killer Workout was the alternate title to Death Spa." So it's ironic to think that you'll be watching a killer gym movie. And right now we live in a time where apparently going to the gym can kill you. I know. Right. Well, there you go. Much less exciting way though. (laughs) Yeah. True. Well, uh, last week we watched a movie called the hit. No, we didn't. Sorry. Two weeks ago, we watched a movie called the hidden Travis Legler wrote in and said, if I remember correctly, the writer director of Jason goes to hell. Adam Marcus says in his crystal Lake documentaries, or Crystal Lake memory documentary that making Jason goes to hell uh, after it. He said he saw the hidden afterwards. He hadn't heard of it before then, but after seeing it, he said, "Uh Oh, and it makes you wonder if no one else in new line cinema saw the hidden and looked at Marcus and said, Hey, Adam, about your story. Uh I find that extremely hard to believe. I got to tell you that I do too. Yeah. That no one at, uh, you know, at new line cinema didn't go like, Oh, basically it's the Friday, the 13th version of the hidden. Well, and like in crystal Lake documentaries, that guy comes off as a real, like know-it-all asshole and is very condescending. So like for that to be the one thing that he backs up, off on is like oh i actually don't know about this one thing is really suspect to me yeah i feel like he knows that movie i think this was his opportunity to be like never saw it just to clear his name yeah adam marcus sorry adam marcus number uh nelson (laughs) nascimento writes and he says hmm all these years i've always took the ending Uh, oh we're gonna spoil the hidden so beware (laughs) we're gonna spoil the hidden friday the 13th the uh jason (laughs) the hell All right, so spoilers for The Hidden in three, in two, and one. Uh, Nelson Nascimento says, so all these years always took the ending to mean Kyle's uh, McLaughlin's alien entering Michael Nury's character upon Michael's death rather than a transfer of his life force, including the daughter being apprehensive to touch his hand. Okay. I said, yeah, this is, Nelson. This is what, this is that's what, what happened. This is what I wanted to know. <laughs> I don't agree with you, but I like the, I like that uh, you did give us your opinion on that ending because it was, I think it's divisive here. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Pat Hetfield writes in and says, the hidden is great. Whichever of you doesn't like it is a heathen. <laughs> and he says, I know what right does anybody who likes the adventures of Pluto Nash have to say that? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Well, you'll be happy I, I, to know. I think I agree with you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> but you'll be happy to know, Pat, that uh, I believe we all recommended The Hidden on yes. that episode. We I mean, did. He hasn't hear, heard it at this point when this was released. Fantastic. Uh, Lance <laughs> Martin writes in and says, I remember this movie as a kid, but I never knew the name of it. So there you go. We've helped out another lost soul on the Saturday Night Freak Show uh, highway of go. whatever. <laughs> broken news as we travel down the highway of whatever the saturday night freak show has helped another soul in our quest should we just end the show with that yeah i think so <laughs> the highway of whatever andrew bradford writes in and says bitchin this is a great popcorn horror flick i saw this around age 16 saturday afternoon on a local tv station great action and badassery afoot makes this a lot of fun to watch 
All right, it's bitchin'. official. I'm going to start saying bitchin' again. I love I, that word. I definitely thought the comment was just bitchin'. <laughs> I, you know, I was happy, bitchin'. but that's okay. Bitchin'. That's great. Bitchin'. You should have brought that back, yeah, for killer workout, right? Um, Teresa Ann wrote in, said she was an admirer, basically, of uh, Claudia Christian's dress in the movie, and she said, that ass dress. Because, yeah, it's a, ah. it's a dress with an ass window. Oh, with the, the, the stripper dress? Window. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, Robin Lineman Silverberg points out that uh, Kyle McLaughlin, McLaughlin was a hoot as the mayor on Portlandia. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Jacob Laws says Kevin Yeager, who did the makeup effects and created the alien, and that also did Freddy's makeup for Elm Street Part 2 and 3, and he created Chucky. And unfortunately, he directed most of Hellraiser 4. Ah. That would be Bloodlines, I believe, right? That's that one. Most of Hellraiser 4. There's a story behind that There's one. There's a story oh, no. behind that one. Yep. Another sequel for the Freak Show? Yeah. Who's the no. probably Joe Ch- Chappelle, right? Came in oh. and fixed that movie. I think. Right. Sean, probably. if you're going to bring a Hellraiser movie, you need to bring the like Henry Cavill video game one. What? Yeah, that's that's a Hellraiser sequel. He's in one of them. What? Yeah. I, Henry Cavill's I, in a Hellraiser movie. Is he? Yes. I'm, I'm not reading. joking. <laughs> like, I thought you were talking Shit. about there's a video game, Hellraiser video game. Oh. No, there's no, a there's sequel. Like, there's a sequel where like a video game is involved. And Henry Cavill. <laughs> well, shit. All right. So we're we're that one. Coming to the freak show. Yeah. All right. We, yeah. I'm in. Here we go. <laughs> uh, Grant Parrish is talking about in that. Uh, he's making a comment on Chekhov's flamethrower, which we christened after uh, watching The Hidden. He says, You know a movie where the gun is there but never goes off? The Wizard of Oz. Doesn't make much sense that the gun is there, but it's also never fired. Weird. But he says this is a sweet ass flamethrower. I'm sitting there going, like, where's the gun in the Wizard of Oz? Where's the gun? No, oh, did the oh, wizard didn't the yeah. wizard have a gun? No, no, no. Um, I know I, uh, one of the um when they're like going through the haunted woods, they oh, each yeah. have a, a weapon, and I think it's the Tin Man has a gun. Yeah, there's a, somebody's got an axe. Somebody's got yeah. Someone's got a an gun. axe. Someone's and I think it's the Tin Man. He has a gun. Like it, yeah. Okay, but well, that violates the rule. The rule over there. Yeah, but the rule is that it has to be introduced in the first act. That's like the second right. act. That, that that doesn't apply. You yeah, don't introduce the gun in the like first like act without it going off in the third. That's Chekhov's gun, or in this case, Chekhov's right. flamethrower. Peter Gat writes in, and he wants to elaborate a little bit about. Uh, the Hidden and Evil Dead 2 is a double feature in Australia. He says, I can only assume that the, the distributor didn't have faith in either film, so that's why he tacked them together. He also says, I remember Michael Nury in the Curse of Dracula show, and I wish it was brought back because I'd love to rewatch it again. Nice. There you go. Before Flashdance, The Curse of Dracula. Uh, and Michael Whitaker wrote in, and he said, I want to thank you for shining a light on one of the first memories of my great grandmother with this episode. When I was a kid, probably in the late eighties, or early nineties, I was visiting my grandparents and my great grandmother was there watching. What I realized was the hospital scene in the hidden with the alien slug jumping bodies. I'm not lying. When I say the image has been burned into my mind for 30 plus years. Also, apparently my great grandmother liked horror movies because that's not the first time I visited her that she was watching something scary on television. Go great That's grandma. amazing. <laughs> love it. Well, I love yeah. stories love like that, that so much. Yeah. Thanks for writing in uh, with that story. Um, uh, yeah, if couple- you have any other, if you have any other like badass grandparents that like horror movies, I'd like to hear about it. Cause that's <laughs> right? wildly different than the grandparents I grew up with. Yeah. Yeah, I want to hear that Mima like, likes Ilsa, the she wolf of yeah. the SS. That's what I want to hear. Yeah, because my Mima doesn't watch that show. She watches Hallmark no. and John Wayne right. movies. I mean, so. Sean, I guess it depends on what you mean by likes it. Like, who does she root for in that movie? You know? Ooh. <laughs> if Grandma's true. really into that movie, it might not be anything. <laughs> That's very true. Um, several weeks ago, we watched a movie called Blood Beat. Steve Carney okay. writes in and he says, yeah, I turned off blood beat after about 30 minutes. I did not like it. Perfectly fine. Don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. I think we would have had we been given the option to try. Right. If off. we did oh, yeah. have to watch it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And several more weeks before that, we watched a movie called Zoltan, Hound of Dracula. Joe Hall writes in and he says, I enjoy your hard work. I just saw the movie and your show was better. 
Oh, oh thanks. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So thanks everybody for writing in. Uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. And now we're going to get to the most exciting portion of our show. And that's where we're going to go around the table and tell you what we individually thought of tonight's movie, which was killer workout, AKA a robicide starting with Colin, Colin, you need to go first tonight. What did you think about killer workout slash a robicide? Oh man, I'm on the hot seat. Um, so yeah, there's, I mean, <laughs> this is the, I mean, what, what, what can you say? It's David A. Pryor movie. I mean, I, granted, I've only seen two of them, but I got to assume the rest of them are kind of like this. I right. mean, uh, this is uh, ineptitude. I mean, uh, they, they, you, did you notice? This isn't saying it's inept. It's just saying like how close to the fucking line they're playing this. There's a lot of flash frames at the end of scenes, like end the end of shots in this movie. That's because like that's the end of the film. Like they were using, uh, what do you call the short oh, yeah, ends? They probably shot this. Yeah, the short ends. They probably shot this on that. What's a short end for the folks who don't know filmmaking, Sean? Short end is when you get to the end of a roll of film, they don't, sometimes they don't use uh, all of a roll of film. So there's these pieces at the end that have not been used. So if you collect enough of them, put them together, you can shoot on those. So, and with stuff like that, you have to be very, you either have to be very precise when you're shooting them or it's going to show up looking bad, like in this movie where you see the frames at the end. So basically those little short pieces at the end of film reels that you shoot on because you don't want to buy film or can't <laughs> buy it. You get the shorties. Yeah. The short these are ends. sold extremely cheap to independent movie companies. Or whatever. Um, yes. I don't know. I enjoyed the music, right? I enjoyed the eighties fashions. I did enjoy for a period of time, all the gyrating bodies. And I suppose that's a thing like, you know, for your perv quotient out there, uh, of the audience, uh, maybe there's more to killer workout than cause it's not working on the slasher movie, uh, yeah. criteria. I don't think it, uh, um, it's almost to the point where you can't follow it. There's just characters being introduced and then killed the murders don't stand out i know that's sick to say but we're talking about movie murders people where there's yep. usually the expectation of some kind of uh you know setup and payoff and the payoff's going to be like ew you know with some kind of i mean only tom savini really does it the best and uh some of the other films that we've watched on the show usually if you have competent makeup effects and do good kill scenes in your slasher movie we do tend to actually like them because it adds that kind of pizzazz and this is one of the movies Movies where it's like well we don't have that so you lose that pizzazz and it's like well what else do you have then well i guess you got a lot of women in leotards like gyrating but you know i mean that doesn't carry a full 80 some odd minute movie <laughs> yeah apparently a 25 minute episode of aerobicize though but not uh not a full movie so I mean, and the acting's bad <laughs> across then. the board and uh you know i mean i i don't know i i, I couldn't grab on to anything that i would say like this is a good scene or here's something to recommend about this movie Co um, colin couldn't grab onto anything he wanted to <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> um, a story so. or otherwise <laughs> um, yeah so i yeah i don't know i'm gonna i'm gonna say that there's plenty of other things out there that you could watch aside that are probably more remarkable than killer workout and uh when we when we get to michaela i do want to hear which one is it death spa or killer workout which one is the better movie but i'm gonna pass on it so michaela <laughs> what do you think <laughs> I mean, this movie is it, it, David A. Pryor. He really is an incompetent and it'll be I think it might kill Colin if we put him on the wall. You know, I think Colin <laughs> might that might be the end of the freak show for Colin if he gets put on the wall. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's I have a really high bandwidth for incompetence when it's set in the 80s. You know, like if this movie was made like within the past 10 to 15 years, hell no. But because it was made in the 80s and like it's got all the 80s stank on it, it it feels like we said like a student film or like a backyard film um i mean i feel like at the freak show it's our job to uncover these right it's our job to uncover these like 80s like trash movies that have just been forgotten to time and you know you so really what you're saying is the summer of david Pryor. that's what you're saying right <laughs> i mean sean if you want to do that 
no. us, that's on you, you know? <laughs> Not at all. Not then you got to go with like David Dakota and Andy Sidaris and all those. They're like, oh, Jesus. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, I can't discount its influence because, I mean, we have seen the tanning bed kill twice since this movie did it. As far as we know, this is the earliest instance of it. Um, listeners, if you know of another one, please tell us. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it does have some influence in that sense. Uh, so I feel like I got to recommend it because this is a, like it's not everything we look for in a movie, but it is a lot of the things we look for. You know, it was fun. It was stupid. It was super incompetent and low budget had delicious 80 stank and music love all that um i would say death spa is the better movie it it does have some plot holes that also don't make sense but i think it's kills are better and it's a little bit uh i don't want to say it's higher budget but it's like slightly more refined if that makes sense and there's some real wild characters and some real wild wardrobe. So I would I would definitely say that's worth a watch, too. But I think I'm going to re- recommend Killer Workout just because I feel like this is what our audience wants to watch. And I, I'm not surprised it made it into the top four okay. for this, honestly, because I feel like these are the kind of movies people want to hear us talk about. So I'm going to recommend it not because it's a good movie, but because it's a fun movie. Holly, what do you think? Um... Well, I didn't think it was bitching. I didn't. Um, <laughs> no, not bitching. No, not bitching. I'm wondering if it's been talked about so much that I had higher expectations and I thought it was going to be more outrageous than it was. I, I'm wondering if, I don't know, that might be, because I was a little disappointed with it, to be honest. Um, I feel like if we were all watching this together, you guys would have a completely different opinion. I feel like if we had like that midnight movie setting where we're all watching it together, you would love it. It could be because I mean, I don't disagree with what you were saying about it, Michaela, you know, like the, the eighties stank, like the music, some of the, like the really terrible monologuing was fun. It was fun. The, the ridiculous backyard fight scene choreography. Like I was laughing several times during this. So there were parts that really did hit the, the, the mark of what we look for on the freak show, but then is it enough? You know, we still didn't get, we got a few kills, but they hardly show anything. And I don't know if it's ridiculous enough. I've I've been, I've been debating, like I've been really on the fence whether I was going to recommend it or not. Cause I really don't know that you'll miss anything if you don't check it out. Um, I will say it's the first time I've ever seen a safety pin used as a kill weapon. Like that's original. I'll give you that. Um, God, it, uh, I'm I'm really torn because I really did enjoy the '80s ness. I like the music; some of it's funny, but I'm not sure if it's enough. I wonder if I had never heard of it before and we had never like talked about it on the show, if I would have enjoyed it more because I didn't have any expectations. I'm not sure, but I'm I don't think I'm going to recommend it. I don't think. I don't think you'll really miss anything if you don't watch it. Um, There's not really anything that we haven't seen that's more fun. I really wanted this to be, I I said in the chat, I really wanted this to be like a cross between uh, Perfect, the Jamie Lee Curtis and John Travolta aerobics movie that we always see the gifts of. A cross between that and um, The Night Killer. I I really wanted a a mesh of those two things. If it had been that like outrageous ridiculous stupid movie with like the great aerobic just vulgarity like put that together that would have been great but we didn't get that we almost got it but yeah i i can't recommend it i was a little disappointed but the italian um, version would have been awesome uh, <laughs> maybe yes. maybe yeah the italian version might have been great the um, italians would have got something out of this yeah yeah, there's a lot of gratuitous close-ups of of spandex-covered bodies, and it's just a little it's a little awkward. It made me, I mean, I made me slightly by curious, but it's a little awkward. So, yeah, I I just I don't think I can recommend it. No, can't do it. Sorry, I'm disappointed. But Sean, take us home. Killer workout. Um, I think you're you're right. It's uh, this is a tough movie, and I'm I'm kind of mad at Dom for how tough this decision is on whether to recommend Aerobicide or not. Um, yeah, it's 
it doesn't give you enough of one thing, but it gives you a lot of another thing. And is yeah. that worth it? It's a, I hate that I have to think this hard about a robosite. I know, but, right? Damn it. Um, but the things I did enjoy about it, um, I mean, or the things that you might enjoy, enjoy about it. Yeah, it does. It is very, it is very eighties. I mean, obviously, um, you know, uh, the workouts, the music, um, uh, I think concept before the perv quotient is off the charts in this thing. I think, um, there'll be plenty for you to look at in that regard. Um, the kills were not, this is called a robicide and killer workout. Where's the, where's the exercise machines killing people? Yeah, like we had uh, in a movie called a robot. It's a movie called Death Spa. <laughs> that's you know, that's. I think this is where I'm at. It's just I have to watch Death Spa now. I have to because I have to know what what the I guess the ultimate version of this movie is, uh, or the better version of this movie. Um, ah, it was close, but I don't think I don't think I can recommend it. It's uh, it doesn't do enough. I think we're. We need more kills. We need, um, I need characters who I can tell the difference. Like we got to a certain point where I couldn't tell anybody apart. We're trying to right. recall people as we go through this movie, like who was in what scene, what happened to who. So obviously, and since we all felt it, or, or at least a couple of us felt it, um, that says to me that it's a failure, um, that they aren't able to pull that off. Um, it's a really, it's an interesting movie. Again, uh, giant safety pins as murder weapons. Didn't see that coming. Um, so, I mean, it's got that going for it, but it's not, uh, it's even weirder because I read the descript, the, uh, prime's description of this before you watch it mentions a twin sister in what? the description. It does the prime. I'll, I'll find it, but the prime description mentions, uh, some twin sister thing what? and people get murdered. Well I know it's weird. Which while is, you're while you're I, looking while you're looking that up, can I just thank the listeners for picking a uh, a free movie on Prime for us to watch? I appreciate that. <laughs> that was nice. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at Kill the Workout 1987. There it is. All right. Here's what it says. Two years ago, a young woman named Valerie was burned after entering a tanning salon. Now her twin sister Rhonda runs a local gym where all of a sudden people are getting murdered. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I read before this, and I'm like, okay, when's the twin sister thing happening? Okay. But it's not like I understand <laughs> she could have come in and taken over for her sister Rhonda. Uh, I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird fucking movie. There's some good parts to it, but oh, it's so close, you know but what? not enough. It really wouldn't surprise me if David Pryor wrote that himself because he didn't understand <laughs> his own movie. <laughs> Couldn't remember it, maybe. Yeah. Right. Everyone keeps asking about this movie, so I'm going to make it clear in the IMDb description <laughs> of what this is. Um, so it falls a little short. I wanted more from this, um, so I'm not going to recommend it, but I am going to go watch Death Spa. And I will return with a ultimate recommendation on the best killer workout movie between the two. So look forward to that. But as for right now, after all this time, I cannot recommend killer workout. I'm sorry. All right. Well, we've got one, four and three against on the killer workout. But it was close. It was a hard call. It's okay. Hard I'll call. be on the right side of history. <laughs> has, has, has history not decided yet? Is this it? <laughs> uh, freak show history. I'll be okay. on the right side of that. Okay. The Wraith. I was the only one who recommended the Wraith. Did we not recommend the Wraith? No, you guys didn't. I was the only one who did. Oh, I take all that yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, see, that's what or, I'm saying. Or does it live better in your memory? You watch it again, and you're like, oh, yeah, I remember why I didn't. It but does. in my memory, I'm like, yeah, I, I like the race. Right. <laughs> Check in right. with us in a year and see where everybody lands on Killer Workout. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. All right, well, next week, we're going to get back to business as usual here. We're going to resume the uh, round-robin picks, and uh, the last person up was uh, Michaela. What are we watching next week? We are going to watch something that I think has been long overdue for the freak show. We're going to watch Rad from 1986. Oh, no. <laughs> that would be the BMX uh, bike movie. The BMX, the BMX <laughs> dancing movie. With convicted felon Lori Laughlin. Uh -huh. oh, there you go. <laughs> Pre full house Lori Laughlin. That's right. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that's next week. Rad on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.